Good afternoon, everybody. It's really good to welcome you to our webinar this afternoon using a Methodist way of life. It's wonderful to be welcoming uh, Roger Walton here, who is going to be our keynote speaker, alongside a number of other contributors who are going to be sharing with us how a Methodist way of life has helped in them in their area of ministry. All over the connection. Um, there's news coming to us every day of new things starting around a Methodist way of life. Uh, as you know, there was uh, intended to be a big launch at conference. The president and vice president were going to uh, lead on that. Um, but because of the constraints of conference, we weren't able to do that. So what, what we've done is to um, phase a Methodist way of life into the life of the church. And it's just really uh, wonderful to see it um, uh, finding enthusiasm from folk and growing in all sorts of different ways um, and um, some of you may know a lot more about that too and there'll be a chance in the in the small groups to share something of that as well as to imagine uh, what might come next. So I want to give a, a sort of an overview um, of what you can do with um, Methodist way of life in your setting. I'm assuming everyone here is familiar now with a Methodist way of life, you know about the uh, commitments and the questions and you probably explored it and perhaps used it in your own personal life. Um, so what I want to do is focus on how it can be used um, to give a sort of bird's eye or a drone's view uh, of this. I'll go through it relatively quickly but we will be able to come back uh, to these things uh, both in the groups and the plenary. So I've grouped things under headings and the first is um, uh, individuals. Now there are a number of ways in which individuals are or can use um, a Methodist way of life and at its simplest level uh, a Methodist way of life is a reminder. Uh, every Methodist member will receive a copy uh, of the commitment card and questions. Probably it will come with your uh, membership ticket uh, and its postcard size. So it fits into a pocket, uh, into a handbag, into a Bible, into the place where you pray. It's something you can keep fairly handy as a reminder of what it means to live Christian living before God. Now you can take this a stage further by using it actively as a, as a weekly reflection. Um, what's happened on your faith journey this week? Uh, what things have been uh, opening up, what things have troubled you, what things have you struggled with. Uh, to take a time each week to do that can be really helpful before or after worship on Sunday, on Monday as you start a new working week, uh, an opportunity simply to reflect on where things are going. For those of you who uh, journal or are open to the idea of journaling, it's a, it's a great resource for that because you can reflect on each of the areas uh, and on the questions in your own journal um, and then go back to it and see how God is unfolding things for you. So it can help you in that uh, process too. Um, but perhaps uh, one of the most effective ways in which uh, a Methodist way of life can work is with a spiritual director, a guide or a friend or a small group. It's, um, it was interesting, I introduced this to some superintendents a few months ago, actually I think it was before the lockdown, um, and um, one of them immediately said, oh this is just what I need, I'll take it to my spiritual director, we can work on this for a couple of years. Um, I, I thought that was a bit short term really, because um, not because the person needed to work on it, but because uh, this is long term, and to work with someone else is a really good way of doing that. Um, of course, uh, it will lend itself to groups. Now, there are a number of different things to say about this. Um, there the would be real value, I think, if, if, um, if in your setting this hasn't already taken place, in doing some initial uh, exploration together in a group. Um, <clears throat> when the card comes, um, then it will be accompanied by a small booklet uh, that fits in your pocket, an A6 uh, size booklet which has got questions and areas for reflection that could be used in that and very shortly uh, a study guide called finding the way will appear and that's very much structured for uh, groups to explore together over four six eight ten sessions however it seems to work uh, locally um, and there's a kind of structure 
for uh, introducing uh, people to explore a Methodist way of life that we're going to be putting on the website relatively soon, uh, which will um, refer you to videos and PowerPoints and other resources which will all be on the website. Um, we're hoping that it will be there before November, but relatively soon all those things will be in place. Um, if you don't want to kind of in a sense start with study, you could start with practice. Um, and, and so you could start with a much smaller group than say a study group of eight or ten. You could start with three or four. And one of the things that we're picking up from across the country is that lots and lots of uh, small groups of three or four are beginning to use a Methodist way of life as part of their intentional reflection and accountability uh, for their own personal discipleship. And um, uh, in one or two places, it's, it's quite, an, quite an interesting model has developed, which, which I commend to you. And that is that uh, um, three people have met with a, a kind of leader or facilitator or enabler. Uh, perhaps somebody who's looked at it a bit longer or has got some feel for it or someone in leadership uh, to help the group um, get established in a pattern uh, of meeting and praying, supporting and sharing. Um, and then um, the facilitator or leader has kind of left the group and started another group uh, of three more people. Um, uh, I think this is quite helpful because I think it gives you someone to work with and help develop a pattern, but it can be sustained by pe three people working together. Um, Local preachers and worship leaders will say more about this a little bit later on, but all worship leaders and uh, local preachers will receive a copy of Finding the Way that will be sent out automatically uh, through local preachers meetings and it will offer for them uh, some resource uh, for continuing development uh, and you can make use of it, more of that a bit later. Um, my, my sense about the size of group that's worth reflecting on is that um, the degree of honesty is inversely proportional to the size of the group. So if you get a group of three or four you can have a certain level of honesty and intimacy even vulnerability that people are prepared to share. If you move that to six, eight, ten, twelve, it, the honesty is going to go down. Um, and if, if your existing group is a group that wants to engage with the Methodist way of life, uh, two things uh, suggested here. One is that um, if your group is quite large, 10, 12 people, then you might consider, if this is going to be the focus of your group for a while, splitting into smaller groups for a period of the time. Now you can do this easily in Zoom if that's the way you're working or when we're meeting together to maybe be in different rooms, but to encourage people to share at depth. Uh, the other suggestion is maybe your group isn't going to focus on this but wants to keep it in front of its life as, as one group I think in, in Burley did. Um, at the end of the meeting, whether or not they used a Methodist way of life, they said the commitments together so that when they went out into the whatever they were doing next, they did it with an intentional um, desire to live in that way. Um, so I, th I think that's a, a good thing to take on too. Now in terms of worship, uh, there are a number of things to say. Uh, covenant services, those from Yorkshire West may be able to confirm this, that I think when we tried an early pilot there, uh, lots of people said this would be a great thing to give out at the covenant service. And, and I, I entirely endorse that. Um, it's a way of someone taking away the pattern and practices of Christian living, having made the covenant prayer and uh, starting the new year uh, with that intention. Uh, alongside that, you can use the words of commitment as a liturgical response. I did this in a, a service um, three or four weeks ago. Our local church has started meeting with all the restrictions that um, have to be there. So we don't sing hymns, uh, we sit socially distanced, we have to be um, invited in and out and so on, but about 30 people were gathered and um, we, uh, we used it as a response to the preaching. So we said together, 
the words of commitment as part of our responding to God, that we want to live in this sort of way. You'll hear a little bit more about the resources for a preaching series uh, in a few moments, uh, but if you were to take that on in your setting, then to use um, the commitment words as part of a regular liturgical response would be possible. Uh, new material we generate team and others um, for all age um, study exploration of a Methodist uh, way of life. Uh, that will be available in the autumn too. And um, we expect that to take the form of pictures and um, questions and, and ways of having conversation. And also that we're going to offer something for worship together. So um, it can be used in all age worship. Uh, or it can be used with children and young people on their own. One of the things that we think is quite exciting is um, when you have special services of, say, someone coming into membership, being baptised, or some group being commissioned for a particular piece of work, this is a great time uh, to give out uh, the commitment cards. And not just to the person who's becoming a member or being baptized or being commissioned, but to anybody who comes uh, as a way of saying this, this is the frame in which we live and do everything. And it may also be an invitation uh, to consider Christian faith. Um, in church life, um, using as a devotional opportunity, whether you're on Zoom or face to face, uh, to use the, this as a way of uh, focusing at the beginning, the end, or in the middle of what you're doing. Uh, using a Methodist way of life on church audit, vision days, that kind of thing. Testing the balance of your church's life against our calling, but also asking in what way are we supporting people in their individual commitments and as disciples. Uh, a key thing for us um, is membership preparation. Um, at the moment, <coughs> excuse me, most membership preparation focuses on uh, what Christians believe rightly and to some extent on how that's been received within the Methodist tradition. That's also very helpful. <coughs> the thing that we think um, Methodist way of life will bring to membership preparation is an invitation to people to develop the practices of Christian living. And that's likely to take longer because if you want to, someone to learn how to pray or to learn how best to develop their faith or to begin to work at challenging injustice in their setting or in the world in, in a wider way, you maybe need longer time. Not only time to develop that practice, but also to talk about it and to strengthen it. Uh, and to make it deeper. So membership preparation, this could be an important part of that, but it might be that you would have to take it over a longer period of time. Uh, Jill will say something about retreats and quiet days, but I just notice in passing that this is a useful resource in that, and I move on to witness and evangelism. It's possible simply to give the commitment cards to people and say when they want to know what Methodists are about, this is what we're about, this is, this is what we try to do, this is what we aspire to be. Um, and we've made it available in a variety of languages, if those of you who've been on the website will notice, and we have a whole pile more to go on, because we're aware that around the country there are many um, Methodist communities that are worshipping in a language other than English as their first language, uh, and therefore it's available uh, in as many languages as we can get access to. Uh, and if you find that you're involved in a community where there's a language that's not included, we would be happy to get it translated if you have someone to help us, because we think this should be uh, for everyone. And when I spoke to the chaplains of the fellowship groups, the people who support those communities, they said, this is a tool for evangelism we in our own language giving people this will invite them to come and join us. So it's worth thinking about that. Um, major events in Yorkshire, the Yorkshire show, there's usually some Christian presence where we give things away. This is a good thing to give away at those kind of events. Um, and um, 
we've already mentioned that um, you could give it as a gift at significant services but in addition to that you might think about people who use your building now we're not in buildings as much as we were but but i guess at some point we will be uh, and those those buildings you go into where there's a prayer board for anybody who comes into the building to put a request for prayer on the board i think it's a wonderful ministry uh, and and to put by that uh, a copies of the commitment card this is what methodists are about might um, might invite someone to consider whether this is the way of life for them so that's a kind of overview uh, of things that um, are being done or could be done um, and i'm going to hand back to carla now uh, to tell you what we do next Thank you ever so much, Roger. Uh, a whole variety of ideas shared there. We're going to uh, invite people to go into breakout rooms now. Um, if you've not used Zoom before, this will happen automatically, though you might need to accept the invitation. Uh, that sometimes happens. Um, we're going to invite you uh, to share around two questions. How are you using a Methodist way of life in your local context? So some people are using it already. How are you using it? We'd be delighted to hear. And which of the ideas perhaps, if you're not using it, that Roger shared perhaps excites you? Uh, so which of the ideas excite you? Each of the groups has a facilitator uh, and they'll bob down some notes and they're going to feedback ideas via the chat room. It's a great pleasure to welcome a number of contributors in addition to Roger who are going to share uh, some ways in which um, a Methodist way of life has been helping uh, in their area of ministry. First I'm going to invite Gail Adcock to share how a Methodist way of life has helped um, in the three Generate 365 this year. So uh, we'll ask Gail to start her video and um, Good to welcome you, Gail. Thanks, Carla. It's um, really good to be with you all. And um, especially because I think uh, it's, it's good to be in spaces, uh, different spaces to talk about children and young people. And uh, that's, uh, it, it feels good to be bringing together some, some different aspects of our work and ministry this afternoon. Um, I am Gail Adcock. I work with the Children, Youth and Family team. Um, the specialism of my work is uh, family ministry and uh, we've been uh, working over the past few months to uh, do some, some uh, I suppose, some uh, transition work into three, uh, 3 Generate 365 uh, because many of you will be aware that we're not able to host our events as planned in uh, October and so uh, this year uh, we have launched just last week 3 Generate 365 and some of you may have heard about that and I want to just uh, explore a little bit of it with you this afternoon. So our hope is that 3 Gen 365 gives us an opportunity really to go on a journey with our children and young people and uh, it's been interesting learning a little bit more as we've been working with um, the team around a Methodist way of life to see how many points of contact there are between those things. And there's a huge amount of synergy between these things. And so we very much hope that you will look and see that there are opportunities to be exploring this in the coming months uh, alongside one another. And... Uh, so let me just explain to you a little bit about uh, some of the core principles that are uh, sort of underline what 365 is and also about what we hope it will do in the coming year. So it's an opportunity for us to get alongside our children and young people. We expect God will speak. We are talking to them in terms of tuning in to what God might be saying to them. And there's a real desire for us, for our children, young people to seek God in prayer, to expect to encounter him in all kinds of different ways. And to just be really hopeful in that sense, to, 
to know that God speaks to us, that we will grow in confidence then as we talk about what we believe and what our experiences are as followers of Jesus together. And so uh, following that and uh, as part of that process, we want to encourage children and young people to respond through speech and action, to recognise that they have agency of their own and they can uh, um, use that individually, but also we think there's some real strength to be gained in recognising that they can speak and act as part of the body of the church. And to know that as the wider church around children and young people, that we can be supporting them to do that and encouraging them to speak out and to take action. And so this period of time over the next few months, we have put aside to just reconnect, to spend time with our children, young people, uh, finding out how they are, how life has been for them. We recognise that in some places it's been very easy to stay in touch with them. In other ways and other areas, it's been harder. And so we want to encourage everybody to just get back in touch with one another, to talk about how they are and how they've been and to um, just explore some of what they've experienced over those past few months. And we recognise that for all of us, this time has been challenging. There have maybe been some surprising things which have been good about this time. And we think it's important that we do some of our reflection and processing about that with one another, because we think it's, it's helpful to share that in the context of being people of faith. So, uh, 365 is very, very flexible. We're encouraging people to sign up simply because we want to create a sense of community. We want to communicate with everybody, but we also recognise that we're all at different stages and different points. And so it's absolutely fine if you're only just getting back in touch with young people to take it nice and slow and to sign up and to take the take things as you feel best able to and that will differ from place to place and that's absolutely fine so there's no hurry to sort of get involved but we are encouraging people to find out more and uh, to see what might work for them in their setting. I think Roger mentioned earlier that we've been uh, working on this new resource which will be uh, available in the next month or two which has some really good connection points with a Methodist way of life and, uh, and our calling actually as well. And so there are four topics that that resource is going to be reflecting on, which are all around listening to God, the church as one body, our actions, great and small, and what covenants with God looks like. And so there are some great connections there and our resource is image-based and it gives us a chance to, to look and wonder together and explore some of what we think God may be saying to us and some of how we we feel and respond in terms of our faith to those things too. So that's going to be available shortly and we'll be sharing about that as soon as it is available. So if you want to stay in touch with anything that's uh, 365 related, we'd encourage you to check out the website. Those pages are being kept updated so you can find that information there at 3generate.org.uk. We also have a YouTube channel uh, that may be something that you want to share with your children, young people, younger adults. We know that's a much more youth focused space. So 3Gen TV there is, would be, be uh, the best place perhaps for uh, them to go and keep up. The youth president Phoebe and the three generate reps all have Instagram accounts. And again, a much more youth space. Um, so if you've got children, young people, we would urge you to connect with uh, our reps and with the youth presidents on Instagram because they're often live. They're doing things that I as a middle-aged woman perhaps don't fully understand but they're they're doing their youth thing in that space so that's really great to see. And then we also have um, accounts on Facebook and Twitter. There's a three generate page please follow it. We uh, share news there and these are all the different ways that you can stay in touch but please take some time to explore what's happening as part of it in the coming year. Thanks Gail, thanks for sharing all that around 3 Generate 365. I know for lots of people that'll be new information but good to see how it's uh, taking on some of the Methodist way of life uh, rhythm as well through that uh, new resource uh, especially. Roger, um, uh, I'm going to invite you now uh, to share a little bit around the Advent and Covenant uh, service idea and how Methodist way of life might be used for that. 
Okay, so this is just to expand a little bit on um, what, I, what I said earlier. We think Covenant is a really good place for the launch of this now, whether we can do this face-to-face -face or, or what we won't know at the moment. But, um, but if, if people are able to make, make the Covenant prayer together or in whatever form they do it, this is a good moment um, to, to, to start them on the way. Um, and um, uh, in order to kind of help that along, we've, we've developed this... Um, resource which will go onto the website uh, in a couple of weeks you know, probably within a month's time um, uh, which which sets out one session two session three session or four session um, introductions so uh, you can do it in whatever way seems appropriate there and all the resources to do it will be available now we thought that uh, given that uh, this covenant service might be the moment at which uh, it's launched in many circuits for the wider membership um, that uh, an advent gathering uh, on zoom or if it were possible face to face um, would be useful so uh, the introductory structure that we're offering on the website will actually work within the advent frame it's called preparing the way um, uh, and to some extent that that's the main connection with advent so uh, it kind of has a, a, a John the Baptist kind of tag to it. Um, but, but in fact, the resource could be used at any time of year. We just think that that might be a good point at which people could begin to explore it. And then when they receive um, formally their, their commitment card, uh, a covenant service, you know, they will have done some inward preparation for it, some prayerful approach to the covenant uh, and, and be ready uh, for um, delving deeper into kind of living out those practices. Thank you, Roger. And uh, it will hopefully send some of those resources out um, when we do the post webinar um, uh, mailing. Uh, it's a delight to welcome Bob Bartindale uh, to share now. Bob uh, helps support the training of preachers and worship leaders uh, on behalf of the connection. Bob. How is Methodist Way of Life impacting on that community? Well, thanks very much, Carla, and it's great to be with you. Uh, I'm Bob Bartondale. I'm the uh, Officer for Worship and Local Preachers and the Connectional Team. Um, but I'm sitting here at, uh, in my loft in Stockport at the moment as a, as a local preacher. Um, and I think as a local preacher, um, lockdown has been, uh, and the whole experience of this year has been quite an interesting one. Um, we've all had to put up with uh, a loss of structure Th things of things that we used to do we can't do anymore though those of us in employment things have changed some have been furloughed um, effectively made redundant um, some of us have found ourselves working at the kitchen table for eight hours at a stint uh, on a computer without the support necessarily of colleagues being present and the natural rhythms of working lives um, around the day to put things into perspective um, for those who've been shielding, obviously it's been even worse and the, and the world has shrunk to four walls or, or for the fortunate, possibly a garden fence. Um, for those of us who are local preachers, um, called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ through our preaching, through our leading of worship, the loss of structure has been very apparent. Um, not only have the places that uh, we exercise our ministry been bolted and barred, but the practice, the, the pattern of our spiritual lives has been disrupted too. And I've just realized um, how much I relied on the demands of preparing for worship to set a pattern for my Bible reading, my reflecting, my praying. Um, I realized that I did in fact follow a rule of life and it was pretty much a Methodist way of life, uh, but very much dominated by a preaching plan and by the reading, the studying, the writing, uh, the preparing. Um, that went along with that, which was fun and very fulfilling, but often driven by necessity rather than a positive uh, intention to spend time in the presence of God, to find refreshment and strength uh, from his word. So for me, Methodist way of life has emerged at precisely the right moment, really, uh, when life has seemed to be so chaotic and random here is a simple, rational way to put structure back uh, into daily life, a time to listen, a time to read the Bible, to most significantly to pray. I'm surely not alone 
in finding it almost impossibly hard to concentrate on prayer in these times um, when prayer should come naturally to us shouldn't it uh, but here is an invitation to seek out God's purposes to ask how best I can engage with them in a strange and unfamiliar landscape um, I think also it's a, an opportunity to step back from the roles and responsibilities we carry um, that often we allow them to define us as people uh, and especially as a local preacher I, I find that I need to rediscover who I am and and we all do I think um, people who are loved by God who knows our names and values us as people uh, whether or not our last sermon was any good um, whether or not people like the changes that I've just made to the worship leading and preaching course in many ways it puts the the horse back in front of the cart um, it helps me to rediscover the depth of God's love and a sense of wonder at what God is doing and, a, and an excitement about what a, a renewed church might look like so I'm really excited about Methodist way of life and and I really hope that we worship leaders and local preachers will uh, will embrace it as part of our work and our ministry not because it's a fantastic set of new resources to use uh, but because it puts god back at the center uh, of who we are as the people called methodists uh, and i hope it will become part of our personal walk with god but also part of the corporate life that we share in the fellowship of the local preachers meetings um, that it'll take its place at the heart of our preaching and worship um, either physically as COVID allows us to do or, or online in all sorts of imaginative ways that some of which we've been hearing about uh, already. Uh, that's why all local preachers meetings will be receiving copies of the Finding the Way uh, resource soon and I do warmly commend that uh, to you, those of you who attend a local preachers meeting for continuing development, yes, but also just for your worship and the development of your fellowship together. So thank you. That's uh, that's what I have to say, Carla. Thank you, Bob. And it's clear um, uh, that you uh, encourage people to use uh, this resource for their own um, spiritual development, uh, as well as the impact it might have in, in their office. To complement what you said, Bob, I'm inviting Calvin Samuel to share a little bit about a preaching series that's being prepared um, to uh, complement and to introduce a Methodist way of life. So, Calvin, it's really good to welcome you this afternoon. Thanks, Carla. Uh, as many of you know, the Methodist way of life was first introduced in the Yorkshire West District back in 1819 as an attempt to respond to the connection of identity expressed in our calling. Uh, but since March 2019, a design group has been working towards a connectional implementation of a Methodist way of life. And there's been a fairly enthusiastic response to that presentation in a number of bodies, including Methodist Council and the Connectional Leaders Forum. And it was in the Connectional Leaders Forum that it was suggested that the way of life should be presented from the pulpit amongst all the other uh, ways in which it's being presented. Uh, and the idea that the 12 commitments from the Methodist way of life could provide a structure for a preaching series, given that, of course, uh, quarterly plans run for 13 uh, Sundays typically, uh, was not lost on them. Uh, Graham Thompson, who is chair of the Plymouth and Exeter District, is undertaking the leadership of the group working towards this. As you well know, the, the way of life is based on the four aspects uh, through which our calling is expressed in our church. And put simply, it's trying to unpack and to decode what exactly is it that we Methodists do and, and how do we live out our lives in the everyday. Uh, the work has begun and authors have been recruited to write outlines and notes for sermons on each of those 12 uh, way of life commitments uh, and each of the outlines will conform to a similar brief and a similar style. Uh, the authors include local preachers and ministers, uh, presidents and past presidents and vice presidents of conference district chairs, good mix of women and men and reflecting a range of uh, international backgrounds. Each sermon outline will reflect on particular portions of scripture which relate to one of the 12 way of life commitments and the notes also include uh, further information, some suggestions and challenges which might make which might be helpful as well as a related story or illustration that hopefully will make 
uh, the ideas more accessible. Uh, and the hope is that this material will better resource worship leaders and local preachers and ministers in churches and circuits across the connection who wish to engage with the Methodist way of life, not only in small groups, uh, but to supplement that as part of what's happening on uh, Sunday. Uh, the recognition being that uh, not everyone will necessarily uh, engage in a small group before learning a little bit about what the way of life uh, is about. Uh, given that the series will be 12 months long, it certainly would be possible for a circuit to dedicate an entire quarter's preaching uh, to introducing these ideas in the main act of worship uh, week by week and following up on these ideas in uh, small groups uh, later in that week. Uh, or indeed to uh, to precede their launch of the way of life in a circuit by preaching through it, making sure people are aware of it uh, before then doing the, the ongoing, and as we heard from Roger, uh, the long-term work in small groups. Uh, authors uh, were asked to complete their draft material by the end of August in order to allow time for review by the Faith and Order Committee. And once that's completed, there'll need to be some editorial and design work by the publications team. So the hope is that PDS or the preaching uh, series resources might be available for download from the Methodist Way of Life web pages by December of this year. Speaking as one of the authors of the sermon outlines and notes, uh, my hope is that this resource will prove invaluable, not only for those who are already interested and committed to exploring Methodist Way of Life, but also for those looking for good quality, well-structured, Bible-paced preaching series who may stumble into the Methodist Way of Life uh, by that route. Thanks, Calvin. It sounds a really uh, exciting resource uh, and uh, we look forward to, to being able to download that from the website. Jill Baker, it's lovely to have you with us this afternoon too. Uh, and you're going to share a little bit about how a Methodist way of life might help with quiet days or retreats. Thank you, Carla. Retreats and quiet days are, I think, primarily to nourish the soul. So we might view them as we view a good meal something which gives us energy, helps us to grow in the right ways, and makes us feel good. So with that in mind, we might ask how might a Methodist way of life provide a nourishing meal through a retreat or a quiet day? Since this should be at least one full day and probably more, it's a prolonged meal, um, if not exactly an all day breakfast. So arriving at the quiet day or the retreat, I would be hope to be offered something to refresh me and to whet my appetite. In a Methodist way of life, we talk about a commitment to being hospitable and generous. So that might be a good moment to live that out, providing something unexpected and out of the ordinary, chosen with the attendees in mind, a small gift, a homemade cupcake, proper coffee, not an officious registration process, but a generous listening welcome. And then the programme for the event might begin and we want to choose a starter. Under learning and caring, a Methodist way of life asks, how are you caring for yourself? How about providing everyone with a comfy chair and a pile of books or a deep bath and some bubbles and an hour in the programme when nothing is expected of them? But eventually the facilitator needs to be made to earn their keep. We might want to select a main course. There's plenty of variety on the menu provided by a Methodist way of life. So depending on the time available, the facilitator or the team might introduce three or four commitments from the service and evangelism parts of the menu, offering thinking and perhaps activities around, for example, creation, justice, faith sharing, and during some time allowed to digest such a meal, attendees could be offered ideas, time and space to follow up one or more strands. How about suggesting to folk that they try a different kind of cuisine from their normal diet? There's enough material in a Methodist way of life for several days, if not weeks and years. So even if you want to offer a world buffet with loads of options and choices, be careful not to let people overload their plates portion control should be exercised because we want to have room for dessert at the end and I would choose to end the time with a focus on the commitments under worship. For those who always choose the sticky toffee pudding 
a really tempting Bible study. For the fruit salad aficionados, perhaps some reflective prayer or Teze worship. For those who look for the shared cheese and biscuits platter, a robustly Methodist act of worship with plenty of hymns. And to round everything off, like an after dinner chocolate, how about finishing as we began with some small random act of kindness and generosity, perhaps a little plant to take away and nurture, as those attending have been nurtured by being part of a Methodist way of life retreat. Thank you, Jill. Lots of food for thought there, uh, indeed. Uh, and great to welcome Leo. Leo, uh, it's good to have you with us. A part of your role is to uh, help um, with the fellowship groups. And so how is a Methodist way of life um, impacting the fellowship groups across Metro? Well, that's a very big question. I don't think I would be able to, at this stage of lock, lockdown, I could answer that question directly, Carla. But I could share perhaps with, um, with you and those in this webinar, a particular way in which I used um, the Methodist way of life in a particular context, fellowship context. The fellowship, uh, this language might not be familiar to all, but it's, it's concerning the, the groups that have um, used specific uh, cultures, different cultures and different languages to gather. And we have them across the, across the connection and we have um, chaplains who uh, lead them, around 15 chaplains, and around 7,000 Methodists are engaged with fellowships all across the connection. Well, we had, a, we had a residential meeting in January when we could meet then, and I have a story to tell about that. But my point here is that uh, the Methodist way of life has the potential to be, to be, a, to be a, common, a common way of life, a way of life that brings us together. This story is, um, of course, just before lockdown in March, before the explosion of Black Lives Matter movement, um, we want very much to engage with um, uh, migrants in our, in, our, in our connection. And Roger came to share with the, with the residential of the chaplains, residential meeting of the chaplains about the Methodist way of life. Um, he came to share in that meeting. It was um, such a blessing because we had had a very long day then discussions about the finance of the fellowships, discussions about the work and then the report, God in Love Unites Us. We are feeling quite uh, tired and challenged. And Roger came with this um, uh, conversation, the cards about the Methodist way of life. And that really brought us back together as a group, I felt that day. Um, that we realize through that um, the commitments that we have to have a disciplined life as Methodist people, a disciplined life of prayer and of ser service, of evangelism, caring and learning. And that was a palpable moment in the, the life of the chaplains when that uh, brought us together, all together, back together, really. So how was the uh, Methodist way of life received by the chaplains, the fellowship groups? It was received enthusiastically, I would say. Um, they saw the spiritual value of it. They saw how it brought us together and uh, how we share that in common, uh, or we could share that in common, that way of living. And as Roger mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, they also realize and welcome the evangelism strength of, the, uh, of, of this way of living evangelism commitment that we have there. Uh, they valued the emphasis on hospitality, that was their response, and uh, they support the initiative wholeheartedly, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. They took a few cards that Roger brought to us, they committed to share with their leader, leaders and through that with the fellowship groups uh, uh, in the connection. And they signed up to translate <laughs> the cards to the, uh, the language of the, the, the fellowships, and the translations are coming slow, but they are coming. We have, um, we have four languages now, and they are placed in the, in the website. People can access them if they want, um, and will be, will serve the fellowship groups. Well, we are going to meet again in October with the 
chaplains to the fellowship groups and I'm looking forward to hearing from them how the engagement, uh, how, it how it happens and what happens and how it's going. I really look forward to listen uh, from them um, about, about that. And then just to realize that in fact with such diversity of languages and cultures and backgrounds, nationalities, how important it will be for us to have something that brings us together, a sense that we live in a, in a particular uh, way, that's a Methodist way of life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leo. Thank you for sharing. Grateful to all the contributors for what you've shared this afternoon with us. Thank you to Gail and to Roger and to Bob and to Calvin and to Jill and to Leo, who we've just heard from. Uh, we're going to take time now to go into breakout rooms again. Uh, and in your breakout rooms for the next five or so minutes, I'm uh, going to ask you to share together, having heard what you've just heard, how can you now imagine using a Methodist way of life in your context? How can you now imagine using a Methodist way of life in your context? So we hope that you had a really engaging uh, time of conversation in the breakout rooms and that the webinar has given ideas of how you might use a Methodist way of life in your context. Uh, there uh, are questions uh, being asked uh, in the chat room. There were questions sent prior to the webinar and I'm sure there might be questions that have arisen out of the breakout rooms. Um, can I ask facilitators that if there was a question that you um, add that into the chat room, um, but would you begin that statement with a question mark? I know usually we would end it with a question mark, but if you could begin it with a question mark, that just helps us to identify the questions. Uh, and um, if we don't get to your question uh, during this webinar time, um, we will keep a, a copy of the questions on file uh, and we will endeavour to respond to those after the webinar. So I hope that's clear. Roger, just as people are beginning to add questions into, um, uh, into the, the webinar, into the chat room, sorry, uh, just can you get your imagination out of the box for a moment? Uh, and I wonder, do you have a vision of how the people called Methodists will look in 20 years time, having engaged with a Methodist way of life? Well, 20 years is a big, <laughs> is a big <laughs> space of time, isn't it? But um, I, mean, I mean, there are certain things that I hope it will uh, uh, enable. It, it, you know, it's, it's not meant to be a messianic thing. It's not meant to solve all our problems, but it's working together with many other things that the spirit is doing in the midst of our life. And I hope that, you know, that in 10 to 20 years that, that we'll be more confident about speaking about God. Uh, to one another and to those who are not people of faith as yet, um, uh, that will that will re-engage with that sense that we're on a journey together and we need to help each other get that journey. That it's a journey towards holiness, towards God's love, um, and uh, that we'll do that. And that that kind of self-confidence that we get, whatever form church will take or small groups, will, will enable us to speak to others. Um, about about God's love. Roger, this question's asked of me a lot. Why is it called a Methodist way of life rather than a Christian way of life? And and in relation to that, how might you therefore introduce a Methodist way of life into an LEP context? The um, it's called a Methodist way of life because it's coming out of our particular tradition. So it's drawing on things that are important to us, uh, you know, that have, have begun in the Wesley period and have always been part of our life and currently is expressed in our calling. Um, so it comes from that place, but it's not meant to be um, exclusive in any way. And when we were piloting this in, in Yorkshire West, this question came up a few times and and, and I said to people, if it's helpful in your context, sharing with United Reform or Anglicans or Baptists, if it's helpful to people, then call it by the name of your church. Call it Trinity Way of Life or Oakwood Way of Life or uh, w whatever the name of your church is, so that it becomes something you share together. It's coming from our tradition, but we're not uh, uh, expecting that to be um, 
exclusive. And, and actually, if I could tail on that, one other question that I think came up was about membership and non-membership. I mean, this will go to all members, but it's not restricted to members. The printing of the cards will go 50,000 beyond our membership. Uh, on the assumption that many pioneer communities, for example, who in, in which people are not sure about whether they want to be members of the institutional church, can still have a, a kind of something to help them in their journey. Um, so we hope it might bridge that gap between um, the traditional forms of church and new forms of church in, that, that are kind of rooted in the Methodist tradition. Thanks Roger, I think that's really helpful. Um, how does um, Methodist way of life uh, and the new monastic movement kind of band together, do they? Okay, well I think uh, new monasticism has been a bit of a stimulus to this idea, um, not just uh, in our church but in, in other churches and, and across the world. Uh, in North America, for example, the United Methodist Church, um, particularly through the work of Elaine Heath, have been developing uh, a, a kind of pattern of life, a rule of life, especially for new communities, but it's based on the five vows of membership. Um, and I think the, the interest in new monasticism, which has kind of arisen in the last you know, 30 years or so, um, has, has kind of stimulated to think about the things that were important in old monasticism and that are kind of re-emerging. And having a rule of life is one of those key things uh, that was important and continues to be important to monastic communities and, and is actually having an impact on many other communities too. Thanks Roger. A, a number of people have been asking about how, how people might access resources uh, yeah. and uh, we know that a number of those are already downloadable from the website. Is, is there any hope for an app? A question has been asked. There is. <laughs> we um, uh, One of our early uh, plans was that the Methodist app that, that many people use and found hugely, find hugely valuable would be developed further to uh, include um, uh, the way of life and, um, and perhaps a much um, more developed rhythm of prayer for people that's accessible for two, three, four times a day um, and um, helps us to pray together as a community um, and, and there's been some preliminary work on that. It, it's a there's a little question about um, resource um, and um, I think Jill Baker is here, chairs the Methodist Council. Um, she would be able to tell you the Methodist uh, Connectional team is having to cut 1.7 million from its budget in this coming year. And so lots of things are being looked at again. Uh, we're hopeful that the app will, um, will survive this uh, conversation and that it will be available. It won't be available this year. Uh, we originally had hoped that if it's available, um, it's probably going to be a year or maybe two years before that's uh, finally developed. Thanks Roger. How do you think a Methodist way of life helps to build people its confidence in their faith? Okay. But I, th I think first it's very simple really uh, because it invites you to reflect regularly on the key features of your self faith and to talk about that with others um, it, it's confidence building and, and actually it's confidence building sometimes in a way that you don't expect so you know when when it asks you about your prayer life I, I think a lot of people think oh I don't want to tell people I find it really difficult to pray or I haven't got a good pattern of prayer or God feels quite distant actually it's quite the opposite that that when you um, you share with others and, and you can say to them actually I'm finding prayer very difficult uh, two things can happen first of all you may discover that the other person is too uh, you may discover that many other people are um, and, and and there's a kind of release in that and and it, you know it goes back into the scriptures there are clearly patterns in the psalms where people found it really difficult to pray and this is part of the journey of faith and, and the kind of owning that it builds your confidence that God's not left you uh, but that there are difficult periods. But the second thing that can happen is that other people may help you to be able to pray uh, by praying for you, by sharing resources, by telling you of patterns that are important to them, by being in solidarity with you. So, so oddly, I think by attending to these things and talking about them with others, that can build your confidence in a God who um, never lets us alone, however we feel. Thanks, Roger. 
and, and a final question uh, due to time constraints. Uh, Roger, there's been a lot of good initiatives uh, and programmes in the past. What makes a Methodist way of life different, in your opinion? Um, well, well, I hope it will be different in the sense that you know it, you know it is helpful to have resources that stimulate us you know like bible month gets engaged with the scriptures for a period of time perhaps with a group um, enriches our spiritual life and then we move on to something else uh, this is this is much more of a permanent way of life i think it, it, it's a way of saying this is how we orient ourselves uh, in the christian faith uh, and and these are the things that we can never give up practicing hospitality, challenging injustice, sharing our faith, uh, worshipping God. We can't give these things up. They're of the very essence and, um, and a way of life invites us to go deeper into that. Amen. Thank you, Roger. Thank you ever so much. Uh, we're coming towards the end of our time together uh, this afternoon. We hope that you found uh, it a helpful uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, giving you inspiration how you might use a Methodist way of life in your context. I, I want to offer on behalf of uh, everyone gathered today, uh, thanks to Roger uh, for your contribution and for the way in which you've enabled a Methodist way of life to be uh, developed uh, alongside others. I want to offer thanks to, to the contributors, uh, to, uh, to Gail and to Bob, to Calvin and Jill and Leo. It's been great to hear how a Methodist way of life is being used in different areas uh, of the church life. Thank you to those who have been uh, the group facilitators and for the way in which you've helped conversation to happen in the breakout rooms and fed back information too. Uh, thank you to the, uh, I, I would say tech team, but I think it's tech individual to Neil, who's worked hard behind the scenes to ensure uh, a smooth run in today. Uh, and of course, um, a, a webinar would be very lonely without participants. So thank you uh, for your time this afternoon. Uh, as has been mentioned already, there are a number of resources already available uh, around a Methodist way of life and that uh, can be found on the Methodist Church website on the Methodist way of life um, page. Uh, we'd also love to hear how you're using a Methodist way of life in your context. If you've not had a chance to share that in the small groups or, or, or on the chat facility uh, and when we send out the post um, webinar mailing uh, will share a way in which you can do uh, that. Some of you will pick up that this is um, one webinar of many within the Yorkshire Plus region and we'd be glad uh, to welcome uh, Sean Adair who will be facilitating our next regional webinar on the 5th of November uh, around hybrid worship lots of questions about how Methodist way of life is being um, used during uh, this COVID pandemic uh, uh, hopefully Sean will kind of help us widen that picture uh, about how we can be church um, in a hybrid uh, setting. Uh, thank you once again to, uh, one and all and may I end our afternoon with a prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for all that you are. We thank you for the love we witness through the ebb and flow of cosmic rhythms. We thank you for the grace that you show to us as individuals. Give to us courage to enact a way of life to which you have called us. Give us boldness to be holy people called to serve the world. May we be kingdom people who always dare to live and speak out, motivated by our faith in God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, one and all. We hope that you've had a, a fruitful afternoon and we look forward to seeing you again in the future.